Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today's guest is Michael McCarthy, and he is from Ireland. You will pick up on that right away. He is passionate. He is full of energy, but his accent is very thick. So definitely have to pay close attention to this one, but it is absolutely inspiring, hilarious. He was a great guest. I'd love to have him back on. But anyway, I just want to give you the heads up about that. Make sure you follow me on all the socials and now you can watch the videos on YouTube if you like to see the guests um, and me and my lovely hair days that I have. Anyway, here's the next episode. Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Michael James McCarthy, right? Do yep. you just go by Michael? Mike McCarthy. Oh, okay. Yeah, so- it's just that Skype has me very formal. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know if anybody that's listening can tell, but he is not from the States. He is from Cork, Ireland. Yep. Yep. Where from is that? I don't know anything about Ireland. I am Irish. I'm very Irish. Well, Don, I knew I liked you, and now <laughs> I know why. <laughs> you have you you have a great laugh, by the way. Oh, I listen, yeah. I always like to listen to a podcast before I come on, and I must say, in all the podcasts I've listened to, your laugh is really endearing. Oh, my I'll gosh. I, that's the you. Irishness in you there. <laughs> it comes it's leaping so... out. <laughs> it's um, very as, abrasive. As, well, you know, you're, you're president in America, Joe Biden. I think his grandmother used to say to him, one, uh, one side, I think, yeah, one side of his family was clearly Irish. I think it was his, yeah, his mother's father or something like that has an Irish connection. And she, he said, he used to say to Joe Biden, he said, Joe, never forget, the best part of you is your Irish part. So <laughs> that's what I say to you, Don, your best part is your Irish All right, part. I'll I'm, take I'm, it. I'm from Cork down in the south, the south of Ireland. So, for example, if you could imagine Dublin's at the east, I'm at the very bottom of the country, as far away almost from the capital as you can get. Okay. So we're, we're, we're where the wild people live. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happy to have you here. I'm super excited because you have Thank a topic you. that means a lot to me. And mm. you like to talk about things that we are grateful and blessed to have mm. in our lives. I, we were talking before I hit record and I think it's so easy mm. for us to not see the blessings sometimes, mm. but if we make our, get the right mindset and think of there are kind people everywhere or there are kind mm. things happening everywhere, then we notice it more. If we think there's mm. jerks everywhere and bad things always happen mm. to us, then yeah. our brain will reaffirm that every time it will always 100%. be there to tell us you're right so i love yes. that you are making people more aware of their blessings i think that's fantastic 100 percent. you just you did a better job than i did about describing what i do Fair play, yeah. <laughs> that'll be all folks goodbye <laughs> there we go i uh, go home and thank you um i think you you, you nailed it i think yeah what you basically said there is like it's a great way to reframe reframe a mindset like is life happening for me is life happening against me obviously if you practice gratitude it does help you look at the world in a certain way. And obviously we can go through about my practice later. Uh, but it's just a lovely ritual to end your day saying to yourself, what am I grateful for? You know, and one thing as well, I think we, we can't be naive and kind of start jumping around like hippies from the 70s, kind of saying, let's make love, not war, this kind of idea. Like we have to be practical. Like there yeah. are uh, people behaving around us that don't wish us well. That doesn't mean that we can't enjoy life. And I and I'm not sure not everyone here might be religious, but I believe I'm a I'm a Catholic, I'm a Christian, and I believe in just saying thank you to my creator for saying A bring me into in, into an existence because I think we can agree that Don, you were surviving before Michael McCarthy into your world, right? <laughs> There's no specific reason why Michael McCarthy needs to be bring brought into the world. But the least I can do to my creator is gonna say, Thank you so much for this gift of, of laughter this joy of spending time out in the sun and feeling it on my face, you know? So all these things in a way are kind of just honoring my creator and saying like, thank you so much. I see it. You've blessed right. me. And right. it's, it's just like, it's like, for example, if I gave you a loan of my, um, my lawnmower, I mean, the least you do is say, thank you. You know, I'd expect that at, at least. And that's what I do. It's like, I've been given this gift of life. The least I can do is say, thank you. I mean, we can go through the science of like the very fact that you and I are having this conversation that I made it, I, I got to the, egg first and fertilize the egg whatever <laughs> that in itself was a miracle 
Right. Um, never mind the actual space of Earth being here in the solar system at this exact time in, in point in history with the moon as the perfect satellite. I mean, all these little things are going on that's absolutely crazy. And we're here experiencing it. And that in itself is gratitude. But it's like, where do we point it towards? And to me, I pointed to I pointed up saying, I like, thank you so much, God, for what yeah, you're giving me. I agree. And I think that's a great way to wake up and go to sleep is with gratitude. You know, even if it is just for the covers that you have over you in your bed, if you you know, not everybody has that. And so you told no, me before yeah. that you're a um you're an elementary teacher. I'm a primary school teacher. Yeah, we call it yeah. primary school in Ireland. Yeah, we call it you call it elementary. <laughs> in Ireland. Your Sesame Street taught us that. <laughs> So um, do you try and pass that kind of gratefulness on to oh, the kids? No, no, no. That, I, I teach them a lot about misery. And like, you know, <laughs> being a cop in the system. I'm like, I don't even call them names. They just have numbers. Two, seven, four, two, six, nine. Here is your, here's your ration of education, Donald. <laughs> there you go. No, uh, yeah, you're right. I'm like, I'm all about gratitude. I say it to, my, I say it to the kids. So I teach in a Catholic school. So I say a prayer every single morning with the kids. And I point up and I say to ourselves, we're going to say to your father, the very fact you're here is a miracle. There's children all over the world. There's six point whatever billion people or maybe more, seven billion people in the world. That's what I'm there. I'm not there for human population, but I'm here for gratitude. Right. They're here, right? And they would give anything to be in your classroom, to be at a peaceful country, to have food, to have water, to have someone teach them. No, I'm not there teaching them any agendas. I'm going to teach the most neutral curriculum you could ever imagine. I'm not going to force you to say like, this is the best president in the world. This right. is the worst president in the world. Like I talk to them about communism. I talk about it. Can you imagine not being able to speak? Imagine me saying something bad and you telling your parents and not having a teacher the next day. Like we live in such a beautiful, peaceful part of the world mm -hmm. with loads of blessings. And I just point at them every day. It's like, do not take this for granted. Do not take your youth for granted. Do not take the joy of having your friends around you for granted. And then I say, we are saying to our father, and let's just give thanks for all those things. So that's our first thing in the morning. And then usually in the evening, I do my own propaganda on them, where I just tell them we did all these crazy things. And I'm like, did we really do that? I'm like, yeah, we did. We did all this amazing <laughs> stuff, guys. But it's like, let's give thanks now. We all survived. We're together again. Let's go home now and bring that kind of that sense of gratitude home to your, your families. Right. That's beautiful. Yeah. So yeah. have you always been this way? Do you know what? It's a really like I mean, I actually had my kind of superhero moment, like of you know, Peter Parker was bit by the Spider Man. <laughs> I was actually <laughs> no, it's actually yeah, I was. I had an emo I had a moment genuinely. Yeah. So I I don't know that I tell you this. I did I don't like to I don't like to, you know, reveal all before the podcast, right? But uh I lived in China for four years. Um I lived in um Shanghai. Okay. Loads of the, loads of Americans in Shanghai. Like I got I got to teach loads of Americans, which is brilliant. I loved it. God bless them. Great people. <laughs> and uh, I did. It was brilliant. And I love teaching Japanese and Chinese and Koreans. You learn so much about these different cultures. But yeah. so I was in China, Shanghai for four years, but I'll never forget it, right? So I had a girlfriend, um, uh, a Russian girlfriend, right? And um, we actually broke up, but we planned to go on holiday to Vietnam. And then it's like, I, my holiday time came and it's like, will I go? Will I not go? Will I, you know, will I go? Will I not go? Blah, blah, blah. Can I bear to see her at the airport? Will my little heart take it? Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I, I did. I saw her. We said hello. She went one way. I went the other way. And uh, that was brilliant. I went to Vietnam and then we just parted ways. We got on the flight together and we never saw each other until we returned at the airport. Oh, but wow. anyway, so I was, in, um, I was in Vietnam for 10 days. And um, I'm, I'm sure you're aware there was obviously war between America and uh, Vietnam. Yes, yes. Now, all war is terrible, but in, I'm not here to defend war. I'm not here to be anti-American, whatever. I'll just tell you what I saw at the museum. And this is true. Um, there was this chemical used on the Vietnamese called Agent Orange. Mm -hmm. I don't know, yeah, I'm sure you're familiar with that. Now, it wasn't used, in fairness, by the, the Americans on the people. It was used on the, the trees to basically hinder their growth or actually to basically um, make them disappear because they found out that the Vietnamese guerrilla uh, tactics were using the trees to hide and then the American GIs were weighed down by their heavy gear and were just getting picked off. So to level the playing field, they had to eradicate the jungle. Mm -hmm. So this this chemical was sprayed on the trees. Now, I don't know, I, I saw the data there, but I can't remember, but apparently, like, literally, like, there was a lot of it sprayed. Like, apparently, it could, like... 
a few grams of it could destroy a city's population if it got into water. It's really lethal, this stuff. Right. And I think even the American soldiers that handled it had health issues as well. But this was sprayed over the thing, the the, the plants and the the and the, the the crops, and it got sprayed on people by accident, but it went into the water. And then they found that generations after the war started being born with these birth defects. Mm-hmm. Okay. So anyway, I went, this, this is all detailed in the Remnants War Museum in Vietnam. So I was there, like a classic tourist. And I'm like a classic man. I went there, I was like, show me the tanks, show me the guns, show me the helicopters. And I went into this room that said the Agent Orange Room. And it was like the most boring looking room in the place. And I walked into that. And oh my goodness, Don, I saw these pictures that to this day I'll never forget. Just people born with defects and these pictures of little children. And I think I'm a teacher. So when I see children getting whatever, I actually can't really watch news and stuff because if I see children getting hurt, it does. It's something that I don't particularly, I, it, it, it irks me. Like not irks me like I, I get angry as in it's something that I get, just get sad seeing it. Yeah. But so this picture of these kids, just heads deformed, paralyzed, you know. Um, I'll never forget a picture I saw of like a man carrying his child through the jungle the child was de- deformed and the man was carrying him to his school in mm. the jungle, like two miles back and forth. I saw a video or a picture of a, a teacher who was like a, a dwarf um, and in a wheelchair, but she became a teacher. So we're using her as an example of like what an incredible mindset. Right. I even saw, like, I don't want to go into it because I don't want to make you sad, but like there was even pictures of like children that were in cages, like because they were so, um, I was one, I don't know the name of the condition, but, this poor girl, God bless her. She had, she could not stop eating. Mm. There was some sort of condition. God. And I think she, like they had to literally restrain her. So my heart was broken. My heart yeah. was broken after walking. Down. And that is not in any way, by the way, I'm not saying I'm anti-America or all that. Yeah. I'm a very God bless America. Long may the stars and stripes fly. But that's just the horror of war. That's mm-hmm. the horror of war. I do not think that there was an on purpose done by the Americans to hurt these people. I think it was just, trying to level the playing field. So I want to say that. But it is a fact that this happened. Right. Um, now, very, very... So I came out of the room anyway, like open up a door back in the, the other, the rest of the museum, which is again, kind of military equipment, whatever. And this woman came up to me, right? This, I just literally got a felt in that. I, I literally, so I, I, I smacked on my arm and I looked down and there was like a dwarf woman, right? Mm-hmm. Who obviously literally has the effects of Agent Orange. Literally has the effects of Agent Orange. She's stooped over. She's about four foot. And um, kind of like just, you could tell like, definitely, I'm not going to be cruel, but like you could say just disabled. There's no question. Yeah, right. Disabled. And I'll never forget it. She she sells, she wants me to buy this band, right? And you know what it says on the band? You won't believe this. Five letters, and it definitely had has a profound effect on my life since I saw this band. Five letters, L U C K Y, lucky. Mm. And I said to myself, if that lady can look me in the eye with a disabled body after living in Vietnam, after seeing what this has done, and she can come to me, a six foot two Western guy having the time of his life in China, holidaying, right. And tell me that she's lucky, that she can put it on a band. I said to myself, Mike McCarthy, cop on. We say cop on Ireland. I mean, like, wake up. No. Oh. You know? Yeah, so I'll never forget it. I I obviously bought, like, 10 bands off her. And, yeah. And uh, I, 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 uh, I was definitely very tearful. Oh, yeah. And, I, and it just, it woke me up to being like, there you are. You grew up in, in Ireland. You lived in a peaceful time. There was nobody dropping bombs on you. You had a loving mother and father. You had beautiful Irish countryside. You had the most boringly beautiful, innocent, happy childhood you could imagine. I mean, boring because like children, gar- like he's like, look, Mike, we're not bringing anywhere. You're in the garden, tough luck. That type of <laughs> imagination type of stuff. And I said, how blessed am I? You know, yeah. it took me to see all these children with these deformities to realize like, you know, I have so much to be grateful for. And as I said, it's like, why should you be grateful for something? It's like, it's, it's like, I haven't quite put word in the right yet, but I, I think it's like, you know, the way 
we remember the Holocaust because we know something horrible happened and humans committed atrocities. But we remember it because it's the right thing to do. And we know what's right thing to do because we shouldn't forget it. And we should honour those people that died by speaking out for injustice mm-hmm. in whatever form it comes. Right. And I think when you see people that are not born as privileged as you, the very least thing you could do is say thank you for what you have. Right. I, do you know what I mean? There's something about it. I just think that there's something like, it's like ungrateful that we we have. And I feel like there's one way we can set it right by just saying thank you. I'm not saying that we go and we like, you know, live in the, you know, right. the back street of Vietnam or whatever. But the very least I can do is not go around with a chip on my shoulder and think I've got the hardest life in the world when there is a plethora of things that people would literally give their lives for. Right. You know? Yeah. I think there's just so much that we take for granted and until something like that happens and puts it in perspective, like I help take care of the elderly and I have an older gentleman, he's going to be 98. And he talks about how just even to take a bath, like you Mm. would have to put on your slippers, go outside, bring wood in, and then you'd have to bring in a pot and then you'd have to go take the pot to the, the well. And I mean, just to take a bath. Or to wash dishes, yeah. you know, I mean, just all these yeah. things. Whereas now, you know, kids, I don't want to do laundry. I don't want to help mom do the wash. And it's like, all you have to do is yeah. carry it into a room and push a button. You know, it's, it's, 100%. So, yeah, it's until you even, hear things like that, you just don't realize how good you have it. Oh, no. 100%. And like, let's just take that old man for an, as, a, as an example, like having a bat as a 98 year old is a completely different experience to having a bat as a, 30 year old or as a 35 year old or as a 12 year old as a 15 year old like a, a 98 year old having a bat you have to be super careful you know they could fall in the shower or they could fall in the bat yeah it's slower to win like as a young person as an able-bodied person what a gift it is to be able to just go for bat and not worry about like i'm not going to fall and break a hip and, and die in a hospital here so even within a bat like yeah there's a technology but there's also the whole like ability to have a bat and then there's the other people god bless them and save them what if you're like, you know, um, homeless? Right. When's the last time you've had a bat or like a drug addict? I mean, God bless America, but like, you know yourself, we all know the world knows that like, it's got a huge physical problem. These people are living in, in, in their own squalor. They, they, they don't even have, pos- they hardly have possessions. Mm-hmm. When's the last time they even had the luxury of a bubble bat? Right. You know? Yeah. So these are, these are simple things that we just need to like beat it into this kind of monkey brain being like, calm down chill out you've got a lot of stuff going on here that is really good yeah at least say thank you right right so when you do your newsletters how often do they um do you write them it, every sunday at 12 every o'clock. sunday okay Irish time. how do you get your inspiration is it just your daily life just things you come across and it just bing? That's i'm a good so idea. blessed i'm so blessed i'll tell you what like it's just like the other way sometimes you get this beautiful feedback loop where it's like yeah I practice gratitude. It makes me happier. I therefore practice more gratitude. But now it's like, I'm practicing gratitude. It makes me happier. And it's now it's like, ooh, I, I like that little nugget of gratitude I did this week. Like, I do it, obviously, in seven days, whatever. But, oh, this one particularly sticks out. I'm going to use that. But I just use my life. Like, for example, there, I'm, I was playing um, Astro Soccer. So it's like where basically middle-aged men meet each other in kind of an AstroTurf pitch. Okay. Like, yeah, and they play things to each other. It's like basically men that think that they're like in their early 20s or their <laughs> teens, but they're actually middle-aged men. And it's like, honestly, I swear to God, it's like I was playing soccer today with them. And it's like, it's like, like it was like coming out of a dream. I was like, I, it was like I could see people for what they really were. It's like, <laughs> we can hardly move. Literally, we can hardly move. Yeah. I feel like, where's the pill? I don't want to, I want to go back to the dream world again where I think I'm, a, I'm Pele or I think I'm a soccer player. But I know it. So I play these soccer games, right? And I don't know, can you tell, but I'm, God bless me, I'm pretty passionate, right? About everything. Okay. And then I get bored of it. But for the football, I'm really <laughs> excited about it, right? For that hour. Yeah. And then, but again, it's like I put a, I sent a pass to my teammate wrong. I, I lost the ball wrong. <laughs> like someone kicked me in the knee. And I'm getting angry and I, I bite down like, oh, and I'm going around the pool pitch and I'm like, you know, pass the ball, man. And, you know, it's like, come on, lads, we can do better than that. It's like, oh, for F's sake. You know, I'm just getting super <laughs> angry, right? 
And then anyway, like we after the game, everyone's like, "Yeah, good game, Mike. No, oh, cheers, good game, bud." Blah, blah blah. I'm like, screw this. I'm going back into the car. And I go, I live by myself, so I'm driving into my park and like, and I'm literally like, just you know, like, I, this sucks, this blah blah, this is so crap. And then I'm like, driving by this local university, and there I come across a man. He's a disabled man. He's got about four bags hanging off him. He's got a limp, and there he is walking from university. And I'm like, wake up, you moron! Yeah, look at the gift you had. You went out there. You played soccer. You moved your body decrepit and all as it is as it seems you're moving your body you're meeting people you're meeting people you're having you're having you're having fun with other humans you actually had an opportunity to talk to them after and you're collaborating in teamwork right and then you can you can drive to your own apartment after right like what would that man do now again i don't pity him it's not pity but it's just a reminder Right. You have a lot of good things going for you. Yeah. Say thank you. I swear to God, Don. The next game, I was like, it was like, it was like someone took a happy pill and was playing Astro. Even people that were playing against me, I was like, good pass, man. <laughs> Great job. You know, and it's like we scored a goal. I'm like, oh, doesn't that suck, huh? <laughs> then they were, they were like, yeah, well, don't worry, it, it, it fades away after a while. But I never forget the one guy, like, he basically like made a fool of me, like he put the ball, be five players, whatever, like. And I was like, yes, thank you. <laughs> he even scored on me. I was like, that's, thank you. That, that was, was a beautiful. great job. Oh, that's So funny. I was like, you know what I mean? It, <laughs> it just changed my whole experience of looking at it. I was like, look how blessed I am to play it. Not like this is my kind of biggest moments of my life. You know what I mean? Like, that, and I, I, shake, I could, like you said about lens and glasses, it just changed the framework yeah. in, how I, in how I viewed it. Putting things in perspective. So I had, I had you listen to my episode about rejection yes. and you yes. told me you wanted me to bring that up. Yes. Um, and for those of yes. you that have not heard it, which I highly recommend it because I was you super should. vulnerable in that one, he was. Um, but I, I really felt like it was good. I really liked that episode because I felt like I was really raw and I was t- saying how we all feel when we get rejected it's just that feeling like you go in that rabbit hole just downward spiral where it's not just that person doesn't like me then it turns into no one likes me and why am I even alive and it just goes down 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 so quickly so I I brought it up you told me to so I don't know what you have to say no I just wanted you to go over it again just so we could really just (laughs) chew on it together just to really get that real vinegar between right, that, that, right. Like, talk about like how visceral rejection is. I've really suffered badly from rejection. Genuinely, yeah. like I really have, like I am I f- I'm a feeler. I think I feel things deeply. I I'm either very happy and it's something I'm working on because I think I do need to be more neutral because you can't just feel and I think this very nature of this podcast as well, you want to connect with people. Right. 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 And then you want to connect with you want and you want other people to see that connection with people in the sense of you want to share that. And like as well, we like to see a project we work on succeed. So there's a yeah. lot of things tied in, but it, it's from our heart. It does come from our heart. We're not logical being like, well, if I follow my um, <laughs> expansion strategy until the year 2030, <laughs> and if I grow on a one, like we don't do that. Certain people do, but we don't. Yeah, right. right. So, but like I, I have um, failed businesses. Honest to goodness, I could, I could hear. We could, we could have another podcast about that. But just like I've had ideas that I thought were going to work and didn't work and it's like oh my goodness guys why didn't anyone back me why didn't people buy it blah 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 blah. yeah and you focus on that and then you see like well hang on your best friend bought it whatever your your, your neighbor down the road bought it for a, a, a person you met once bought five boxes whatever it was and like you can see that actually people did try and help you out in my, in the, but you focus on the rejection you focus on right the people said that said no as opposed to the people that said yes yeah, it's and, like it's how we're wired or something to always see the negative instead of the positive. It takes yeah. effort to find Serious the positive. Effort. Yeah, Seri- it, it, it does, like for example, right? If you had a hundred people that said yes and one person said said no, I guarantee you, you would give just as much time to the one person that said no as the hundred people. It'd be in the back of your head. You're saying, well, "Why? Why did they say no? What is it me? Something I did? Is it you know?" Um, but the reason why I brought it up to you specifically is because I listened to the podcast and yes, you were very vulnerable. And what's that day? Is it Brene Brown? 
the the right the she's a writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's I great. Feel like, I felt like I was like, hang on a second. Am I listening to Brene Brown here, or am I listening to Dawn? Is this a Dawn conversation? What's going on here? But it was it was very very succinct, and it was very very deep, and it was very very true. And it's like, look, I'm in the same boat. Like I'm sending out this newsletter. Do does a person look at it for one second? Does a person I I know they open it, but how much do they how much do they really take from it? Is it just a barely like a 10 second ad nonsense? Like I'm putting myself out there. <laughs> like this is my work. Yeah. And there's an element of judgment in that. And I really take it personally and take it to heart if someone says no. So I feel your pain. I feel your pain. Yes. But here's what I was gonna say to you. Putting on our lens of gratitude, because I looked at because I'm the professional speaker that I am. I did my research before <laughs> I came on this podcast. And I looked at <laughs> I looked at all the people you spoke to, mm. all the different types of conversations you've had with, I would say, industry leaders, might be household names, but my goodness me, they're doing something different. They are leading their industry in some capacity. They're confident enough to go and speak and share it. And sure. you're having a dawn conversation, which I love, <laughs> which everyone says they seem to love about your, about your show. But as I said to you, it's like, okay, fine. Is anybody listening? Fine. But also I would say, how blessed you are to have had all these conversations. So yeah. instead of focusing on, is anyone listening? I'd be focused on, oh my goodness, remember when I talked to, to that firecracker lady who basically motivated me to declutter my wardrobe and everything else that's not moving. <laughs> I need I need to call you every morning so you can give me that boost. Of... <laughs> we all boost, forget, you know, we forget. You forget, like, Every you you have to think of your podcast as a culture. You are putting these people around you. You know, you talk about you are the person you you know oh, spend right. the most time with. Blah, blah. But yeah, I, like instead of being on Instagram, having all these other people come and speak to you, you're in control of the conversations, and you're having them. Like you are benefiting all those conversations, leave an imprint in you. Yeah, that's you know? true. Yeah, I'm learning An stuff impression. daily. Yeah, it's very informative. So, so like even there now, like, I, I mean, I'm not blowing my own trumpet here, but I mean, I brought you there to that, to Agent Orange in Vietnam. And I talked about, you know, disabled people and talked about how blessed we are and talked about that moment. Like, if you understand and grasp that story and you kind of say, so, Gee, I kind of get this now. I'm not saying you don't, don't practice that, but it's a nice reminder to get and you sure. might forget it. Yeah, and there you are. You're, you're having someone come in, and then someone else is going to come in tomorrow, and they're going to talk to you about here are the new five superfoods that everyone needs to be eating. Yeah, like, you are upskilling yourself all the time, and I think that is something that if I were you, I'd be very proud of myself for having all these conversations. And you win out. You win either way. If people, if people are smart enough to listen, they will listen. And if they don't, so what? You're still having all these great conversations. Well, and it's funny too that we will have such great advice for other people, but we don't turn around and use that information on ourselves. So when yeah. we are feeling down, like what would you tell a friend if a friend was down and saying, you know, I've got this newsletter and I'm putting it out and nobody, I don't even know if anybody likes it or reads it. You'd be like, of course they are. You're putting out great stuff, you know, but why, why can't we talk nice to ourselves? We, we can do it so easily and cheer on other people, but the one person that we spend the most time with, for the rest of our whole entire lives, we bing, 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 you know, just always giving the hits instead of talking ourselves up. You hit the nail on the head. We absolutely destroy ourselves. It's incredible. It's an incredible, mm -hmm. like, it's an incredible ability we have to just tear ourselves down, you know. And But like, honestly, Don, I say it all the time to my kids in school. The message doesn't get in here. And I, I just don't know. It's hard. Like, that's why I said that gratitude is one of those things that I feel it lessens the load a little bit, you know? Because yeah. it's like, instead of focusing on you, as in, which is a tendency to do, like, even, you know, a lot of people say, like, depression comes from the sense of, like, I'm not enough. I don't have what I want. I'm not living the life I want to want. Whereas I think, you know, one way of looking, I'm not saying, obviously, you have, obviously, depression is a very serious issue, but it's an outward focus is kind of the best. It's like, what can I offer? What can I give? What can I do for the other people to kind of get you out of your own head? And, you know, gratitude as well is kind of sense of, okay, what have I got my life that's actually pretty good? Yeah. You know? And I think someone said, no situation you have, there's no situation on this earth that can't be made worse. So, you know, be grateful for what you have. It might be the perfect life, but there's always somebody I'm sure would glad these pop places with you. you yeah. Know? But but yeah, you're right though. Like, as I said, it is a battle and it has to be a ritualized practice of 
keeping it up because yourself you've got the other side of your brain that's just like you're not enough you won't be enough like you'll never get to 10,000 subscribers you'll never get to 10 a thousand episodes you know everyone thinks it's a silly idea it's there all the time and you just have to constantly to battle it and I think as well that's what I like about you is that you know if you don't have that voice in your head like what are you are you a psychopath like what is it like you know what I'm saying <laughs> I think if you're a rational person, you probably should have that voice in your head. Right, right. Well, and they you know? say like to do volunteer work and to serve and serve others. Doing that helps put you back in check, puts puts you back into look at all the things I have. You know, I'm serving food at for homeless people. You know, look at all the people that have to come places like this to eat where I can go in my fridge and complain that I've got nothing yeah. when it's actually full of all kinds of good stuff. Yeah. You have a very rich life. A very rich life. We were talking about the volunteering. Right. We're talking about the guests you're speaking to. It's a very, very rich life. Like I even said there, like I drive in all honest to goodness. If you saw the car I drove, it is. <laughs> I'll tell you how bad my car is, right? It's the, I was driving in January to school one day, right? And I, I like, the, we had ice in the morning and there was so much, you know, there was ice on the, on the, on the car window. And I put like hot water over the, the windscreen. <laughs> I was like, that's really weird. The ice hasn't disappeared. Oh my goodness. The ice is in the inside. The ice was in the inside of the car. <laughs> so there I am driving to school. I'm literally scraping. I'm scraping ice off the windscreen with my bare hands. Oh, and I've got my this, like, God. I've got this Eskimo like hat on my head. Like I'm like, <laughs> this is absolute misery. But like I said to myself, like I'm in a traffic jam and I see a guy like in a Mercedes Benz, yada, yada, Range Rover, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Like, you know, party is like, oh, if I had that car, I'd be so happy. Yeah, yeah. It's like, would I? Would I swap seats with him? Would I want his life? Really? Maybe right. he's got worries that I don't want. Yeah, Maybe it's he so doesn't true. See the world. Maybe he doesn't see the world through his spirituality. Maybe he's like the most boring man ever. And it's all about just like what he can accrue in this world. Right. How rich really is his life? It's like, no, nah, I'll take my little Kiri. Oh, thank you very much. I'm happy enough <laughs> with the life I have. You can't really put a price on like there's richness and there's richness. There's a rich deep beautiful life and there's a rich life avoiding yachts or having yachts and cars right, and that. right i know that i want to be in the first option oh sorry in all the podcasts you always go i'd rather have the former rather than the latter fantastic <laughs> Thank you. i think that you need a podcast no i think i think um i think i i uh i'm really happy coming on to people like yours show and uh yeah no i think talking you would... to people because like Trust me, it'd be like, I'm doing, I'm flying, but I see my pants at the moment, trying to get a newsletter out every Sunday at 6 a.m. American time. And <laughs> if I was to add a podcast onto that, it would be, you can only imagine it. It'd just be me in the car, like, just look, welcome <laughs> to today's episode. Today I'm joined by, where are you? Who are you? What's going on? Like, it'd be, no, there'd be no organization to it. I don't know. I think you should think about it. Anyway, tell people how they can find you and your newsletter. Let them okay. know how they can do this. Well, I'll tell you what. All right. So look, Dawn, um, I have um, a newsletter called theblessedclub.com. Now, I think you've got a link or to it. I sent it to you. So maybe you can attach it to the bottom and do that thing that's doing podcasts. Okay, I will so definitely do that. do that. Yes, I will. So, I'm I'm offering your clients, clients, <laughs> listeners, sorry, super fans. I'm offering your fans <laughs> this opportunity to come join me and practice gratitude once a week. It doesn't cost anything. It's completely free. All you have to do, and I think actually I speed read it as in I read it and I think it takes about two to three minutes to read. And as well, possibly, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, probably a minute for somebody with average IQ. <laughs> so it really wouldn't, it would not take long. And if it just causes an ounce of just like, oh yeah, that's pretty good. In my opinion, I think it's worth listening to. All right. Yeah. So just make a space for it. And then further challenge if you want. Okay, so we got that. That's my newsletter. For your listeners, I think practicing gratitude is the most easiest thing to do ever in the world. So all you need to do is go into your local Walmart, whatever it is. See, I use American terms. I'm okay. I know what you can do. <laughs> You can buy a, I call it a coffee book. We call it a coffee book. It's like a, a basically, a, what do you call it in America? 
I don't know like, what you're uh, talking about. See, copy books an Irish word. It's basically like, you know, kids use them in school to like write down their. Oh, like a notebook. a notebook. Yes, a notebook. Thank you so much. Thank you for, yes, directing me there. She's on, she's on cue. Bang. That, what a host, right? So she's directing me. You can buy a, a notebook for, I'm going to say, 50 cents. Uh, a copy book costs you less than a dollar, 50 cents, whatever, right? Every single night before you go to bed, it can be a prayer. You can start it off with, dear father, I'm thankful for X, Y, and Z. Yesterday, myself and my friend, oh my goodness, we had tears coming down our face. We were laughing so hard in school because something funny happened. It wasn't anybody's fault. It was just a nice, funny moment. And I said, dear father, thank you so much for the gift of laughter. That's it. It was like about 10 words. And it was something I could offer my creator to say thank you for. It's very, very easy to do. You could take a page split it into two parts or three parts and fill it up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday onto your next page, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It could be two lines and let the practice build up. And it would be so amazing, Don, if I came back in a year and some of your listeners just said, hey, John, we're going to just send you in some things that we're thankful for after listening, after doing this activity for a year that I would have never, ever, ever thought of with far right. practice. Right. That's no, all. I think that's great. Completely that's free to do. It we is. cost you about maximum two minutes a day so if you want to do it just five days a week even that'll be 10 minutes 10 minutes a week and i promise you things will start coming into your mind you'll start looking as you said before really eloquently you'll start looking for things to be grateful for it'll hopefully change your mindset and also you'll start appreciating things more around you yeah i love it Woo! this has been fun it's really, good. I hope so. I, yes. I, I, swear, I said, I genuinely listen to the podcast and I swear to you, I'm not joking. <laughs> I believe you. No, because I, I listen, but like, I listen to it since you sent me the link. Genuinely, this is a really professional podcast and I listen to the people you had on. They sounded really professional. And I was like, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be as professional as these guys because like, I don't even know what I am because they're like, breadwork instructor. <laughs> I'm the, you know, whatever. It's like, I don't know what I am, but. I'm just telling you is that I do appreciate gratitude. It's important and I'm passionate about it. And no, thank you for I giving love me it. a space. I love thank it. you for giving me a space to talk about it. Dawn, seriously. Once I saw your little bio, I was like, I hope, I hope so much that I'm on this podcast. And oh. thank you for giving. No, really, thank you for giving me because I'm I'm a nobody, Dawn. I'm a nobody. Well, not to me. I think you're away. fantastic. And I loved having you on. And I appreciate you taking the time to help. Not people, at all. It was a help pleasure. People. <laughs> honestly my energy levels have gone through the roof i don't know what i'm going to do i'm gonna to have to go for like a 10 mile jog or something to calm me down or put my face in a bucket of ice but no you've riled, you've riled me up don you've riled me up. no but thank you seriously you're you're a beautiful soul god bless you yeah Yo, thank you so much and we will be in touch we'll talk soon god bless don cheers bye thank bye. you bye <laughs>